Hello everybody. Today is Thursday and tomorrow will be the last day that I'm off. I have to go back to work the weekend. These nine days have just absolutely flown by. But I have uh, really enjoyed them. I didn't get as much done uh, as I wanted to get done, but I finally told myself to hell with it, basically. You know, my house stays decent and everything, so I just changed a comforter or two out and changed some curtains, did a little bit of dusting and called it a day. That's my spring cleaning for this year. Uh, been watching on the news and stuff about uh, Casey Anthony's murder trial. You know, they've, uh, they're have they doing the jury selection and they're saying that it is possible to find some people that haven't heard anything. I don't see how because it's been all over the news for two years now. And, uh, frankly, I was getting a little bit sick of it because they just kept dragging it on and on and on. But now that it's actually coming up to time for the actual trial, I'm getting a little more excited about it because I just want this to be over with. They, uh, they had to throw out uh, so about 50 potential jurors because of one woman. They're blaming this one woman for them having to throw out 50 potential jurors when the state of Florida should be looking at themselves because it was really that county's fault when they picked the potential jurors because uh, she actually was one of the searchers that helped look for Kaylee. And if you've seen where uh, uh, George Anthony gets into the argument with some of the protesters and he shoves this lady back that's her. She was supposed to be a potential juror. However, she was also on the witness list, so she's going to be a witness in the trial. And they're blaming her for talking and, and saying that it was her fault that all those potential jurors were thrown out. No, it was whoever. Uh, uh, they, they should check these people before they call them in to, to uh, ask them about jury duty. In other words, I know they can't uh, check everybody. If you can't check everybody, at least check your witness list to make sure they're not in the jury pool and don't blame the people for talking because when she got there all she did was say well i know that i'm not here for the jury of the casey anthony case because i'm a witness you know and sure enough they had her as a potential witness for casey anthony case then uh another guy uh was fined 450 dollars because he deliberately tried to get out of jury duty and told the judge that he had started talking to stuff just so he could be excused from jury duty. And uh, they say you could be thrown in jail or something if you, if you uh, try to get out of jury duty. How many of you have had jury duty? I have done a, um, a video on jury duty before, I think. I know I was going to. I believe I did. But I have served jury duty several times. I uh, uh, was summoned for jury duty in 94, no, 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 let me back back up on that, 91, 91 or either 92, I believe it was 91, in uh, in the state of Virginia, that was, that was before I came down here, and I, down there at Tazewell County, you have to serve a term, instead of just a day, you have to serve a term, and I was serving on the criminal jury, and so I had to serve, I think, from August until November, and any time they had a criminal case come up, I had to go down there and sit in the jury room and wait to see if I was going to be picked, and I was only actually picked one time for one case, and I did sit on one case, and we sat there till almost 5 o'clock that evening, and the judge finally ended up throwing the whole thing out because... He said there wasn't enough evidence. And the whole time I was sitting there listening to that case all day long, I was thinking to myself, this man did not do what he's accused of. Because there's no way he could have done it. There was no proof. There was no evidence. It, the evidence all led to his girlfriend committing a crime. That's what I was hearing. And then the judge threw it out. So, But anyway, that's the only one I served on in Tazewell County. And then um, when I moved down here to Greensboro in 94... I had to serve jury duty in High Point, North Carolina, in 99, uh, but that was only for one day, so I had to go to High Point, and I had to sit down there all day long, and finally they called us all into the uh, courtroom, 
And we're sitting there, and they got all the potential jurors up here on the box, and they ask you everything. They ask you, what's your name? What's your spouse's name? What are your children's name? What do you do for a living? What does your spouse do for a living? Do your children work? Who all lives in your house? They ask you everything. And um, so all the potential jurors, you know, they were asking them questions, and this was a, a uh, the case that this one was going to be was uh, domestic violence with attempted murder, I think it was. He tried to kill his girlfriend. And so, uh, finally, the, you know, things was looking pretty good, and I'm still sitting back here in the background in the courtroom, and I'm thinking, well, they might take these jurors, you know, and then, you know, I get to go home. So, they, uh, they, you know, started talking and there was one particular juror they wanted to let go so they excused that juror and then uh, the next juror to come to the jury box was Cynthia Lester I said damn I thought I was gonna get out of it but I went up there and they asked me all kinds of questions then they asked me uh, had I ever been a uh, victim of domestic abuse did I know anybody that had ever been a victim of domestic abuse and blah 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 and then, so I had to tell them the story about um, where my cousin murdered his wife back in the 80s. And they asked me what his name was, what her name was, what county did this happen in, you know, how did he do it, and uh, uh, did he go to trial, what was the outcome, what kind of time did he get, and this, that, and the other. And I'm telling them all these details. And I see the judge up there look like he's got his little laptop. He must have been checking, he might have been checking out everything I was saying, I don't know. But they waited for a few minutes after they talked to me, and then they ended up excusing me from jury duty. So I got to leave that time. And then I was called to serve jury duty here in Greensboro, North Carolina, on uh, December the 2nd, I think it was, of 2005. So when I went down here to uh, downtown to Greensboro, it, I remember it was cold that day, and when it was raining and the rain was freezing, so it was basically like having an ice storm. And I went upstairs to the uh, jury room. We sat there all day long. And they come and called some of us out to go into the courtroom and be picked, but I was never one of them that was called out there. I had to stay in the jury room. <clears throat> and we stayed in there all day long and didn't get out of there to almost 5 o'clock. But the thing of it was, during that time, was it was way up on the top floor at the courthouse and you know so and they didn't have any curtains or any blinds in that room you could look out and you know just see all these tall buildings around you but you could see the ice sticking to the buildings and into the ledges and it <coughs> excuse me it was so dark and dreary <coughs> and um and we had uh no heat there was no heat in that jury room and so we're sitting there in a room with no heat watching an ice storm and they told us i we literally sat there all day long from 8 30 that morning until almost five o'clock that evening in our coats because they told us well you know with so many people piled into a room you didn't need no heat body heat would serve ain't that something and they let us out i think for 30 minutes uh, we could not leave the building uh for lunch we would have been able to had it been on a, a nicer day, but they said due to the weather, you know, with the traffic and the ice, that, you know, we, we were not allowed to leave the building. And so, uh, but that was the last time, and I better knock on some wood that I've been called to serve jury duty. And they can't call you, once they call you, they can't call you within the next two years. So they can get me again at any time. And I remember when I served on the jury duty in High Point, though, uh, this one woman, and I know she was just trying to get out of it. She came in there with a baby on her hip and two holding their hands, and I told them when she came in there and signed her name that uh, she didn't have a babysitter. And the woman said, you were notified this at least two months ahead of time, and you could not find a babysitter? She said, no. So the woman told her, I'm going to excuse you today, and then she gave her another date, and it was like three months away. She said, you have to be back on this day. I'm sure that would give you time to find a babysitter. You need to be here. So that girl should have just left those kids at home and came on that date and just got it over with. But anyway. Uh, so anyway, so they're, they're trying to choose this jury for Casey Anthony. And I'm just, I'm looking forward to when the trial actually gets started. 
and I hope they uh, televise it. They were showing uh, Casey Anthony leaving the courtroom yesterday because they something wrong with her hands. They said her hands like went numb and stuff. And then they're trying to say it's her guilty conscience coming out. She's still human, people. She might have the flu. She might have a virus. You know, it don't mean that her her guilt's getting towards you. She has no guilt, basically. She don't feel like the rest of us. She has no guilt. So that's going to be an interesting trial because Jose Bias says he can tell you within the first minute after he stands up as to why she didn't report that child missing for 31 days. He said all that would be answered within the first minute. So I want to be watching that first minute. I want to see what's said. And now what about Lindsay Lohan? She's back in the news. She went, well, she didn't even go to court for the uh, stolen necklace the other day. She, I don't think she had to go. Uh, they said it would have costed more in the long run for the, uh, to have the uh, guards and, you know, with all the media and stuff that would have been there. So they didn't make her attend that one. But she pleaded a no contest, which they said is basically a guilty plea. And they're saying that uh, she more she still got to go back for her sentencing because the judge found her guilty, of course. And they said that uh, she's got to do 400-some hours of community service. And uh, she got so much jail time, I think, what, three months? But... They said due to the overcrowding in the jail, she'll more than likely be under house arrest. Did anybody think anything different? These people and these, these judges make me sick down there, always giving her. This is what I say. If it's because of overcrowding in the jail, let somebody else out and put her in their place. That's the only way you are ever going to stop that girl from doing what she's doing. These people are either blind and don't give a damn or they're stupid. If they keep thinking that putting her on house arrest is going to do anybody any good, it's going to do nothing but piss people off and make her continue to do what she's doing because she knows she can. And when I heard that, that just made me want to jump through my TV screen and hit somebody I don't even know who I was going to hit. But that just pissed me off. But that's neither here nor there. Anyway, I think that's all that's... Uh, happening as far as Casey Anthony and, and uh, anything else going on in the news. So when the trial starts is when I'll actually be back. If you have anything that you would like to add about a jury duty or any of your feelings uh, about the Casey Anthony case, you can uh, leave me a comment uh, or for my YouTube people out there, send me a, uh, a video response. I would love to have a video response. And until next time, bye-bye.